Shorter guys here, uh, just the easiest way to get on the bike, because it is quite a tall motorcycle, this whole class of bikes are quite tall. Um, the mistake you see a lot of guys doing is uh, trying to use the side stand to help you get on the bike and then messing around with the stand and not being able to get going properly. So, uh, start off uh, with the bike in gear, it gives you one less thing to do once you're, uh, once you're on the bike. It also sort of helps to stop it from rolling away on you if you're uh, on uneven ground. So open the bars up away from you so you've got lots of room. And basically just swing your leg over to the, and aim to go to the foot peg. A lot of guys will try and go all the way over and then they, they topple over the other side and I'm sitting there going, come on man, just get on your bike. So from there, the bike's in gear, ready to start, clutch all the way in and you're, you're good to go. No, no bother, no stress. Um, and your seated position when you're off-road, uh, really important is the position of your elbows. So it's all about trying to stabilize and control your upper body so you can cope with the changing conditions. If you hit a soft patch of sand, you don't want to get lapping around the place like a big pendulum and putting more inputs into the bike. So, you know, road style, you'd have your elbows quite low. Off-road style, you want your elbows really wide. So that's all about engaging your triceps, engaging your chest muscles, and providing really good, strong muscle support for your upper body. So that you not so that you can grip the bars even harder, but then if you do get those pushes around, you're able to uh, to maintain your position and, and not uh, influence the bike negatively. Um, we need to sort of try and stay as relaxed as possible. Uh, if you haven't ridden sand before, that's pretty much the, the definition of easier said than done. But uh, the more you tense up, the more the little wobbles in the sand are going to mess you around, and they'll become bigger wobbles. So you have to try and keep your grip really nice and soft and relaxed, and just. Kind of let it do that a bit. Cool. Uh, most of the time, uh, you're better off standing up uh, on the uh, on the off road. Uh, the standing position should be somewhere in about there. So, not in my mind standing up super tall. Like that, you have uh, less stability. Uh, again, if you hit that soft patch of sand, it's a lot harder to support your upper body, and uh, you'll load up the front end more than you want it to be. And that's not good in the sand. So we want a little bit of bend in your knees and a little bit of bend through your hips. The mistake a lot of guys make, sorry, I've got the bike in the center stand. I find a lot of guys will uh, have their legs straight and their hips straight and then bend through their back, through their spine, which makes the handlebars feel really low, lots of lower back, oh, back problems, really fatiguing. If you keep your torso, your, your spine straight, then bend through your hips. It takes a lot of those problems away. you still got your core strength working really effectively for you to stabilize. And it's basically just going from there to there it gives you significantly more strength and control on the bike. So, where's Yoki gone? Quinn, is this a favor? So, if I'm standing up really tall, give it a push, push me in the shoulders, try and push this over the front really freaking hard, get into it. <laughs> it's kind of hard to stop growing this me around. As soon as I stick my butt back into there, there's nothing Sorry. you can really do to mess me around. Mm. The effort Quinn's putting in is the effort the sand's going to put into messing you around today. So play around with that and, and, and try and get that more correct posture to stabilize yourself. Uh, another good thing to think about, uh, the scarier the terrain, the closer you need to get to the bike. So most people when they get into something scary, they go, oh, oh, oh and try and get as far away from the problem as possible. When it gets scary, you need to drop down closer into the bike to reduce your leverage on the motorcycle. So one thing we talk about a lot at schools is uh, imagine the motorbike and you, your center of gravity, working together like a triangle. Front axle's one point, back axle's the other, your center of gravity's the top. If I'm standing up really tall, I have a high top to the triangle, lots of leverage, and I'm going to mess the bike around and make a small problem into a big problem. If I bring that down into there, the triangle gets flat, the geometry is more stable. It's exactly the same situation for uh, these changing conditions we're going to have. And one of the big reasons why the R model has a lower screen. If I uh, had the big high touring screen, I'd be smashing my face on it all day long. <coughs> so, yeah, coming from here to here, and then dropping it down when you get scared. <laughs> cool. Uh, your throttle inputs and, and some of the, uh, the techniques for the, for the sand. Uh, to start off with, we're going to have really short, small patches of sand, basically where the road's broken up. Uh, in those situations, you don't want to be cornering, you don't want to be braking. 
as much as possible you want to be accelerating slightly through them. So eyes up, looking as far down the path as you can to get this information early and then setting yourself up so that you're, you're doing your turns either before or after those sandy patches and just smoothly rolling the power on through those sandy patches to have the bike track really nice and straight for you. It's kind of one of those if in doubt power out situations. Uh, the bike will track through the sand much more uh, effectively with the power being gently wound on. Cool? Sounds good. Thank you.